Stupid Mac is up there. <laughs> Stupid Mac. Stupid Mac. with this. Nicholas? Yo. No. Oh, Yo. Man, you all subdued. Where's your cocaine? Cat! I feel like you need cocaine. My roommate probably has some in his room. Little bump. Little bump. Nope. Little bump? I got my uh, Kool Aid. So. Uh, I'll just make <laughs> you, you sleep. the Kool Aid. Yeah, it'll just give you the diabetes. You don't want yeah. that. Is it Spider Man flavor, Nick? No, well, it's red. <laughs> it's a Tom Holland's blood. <laughs> uh, it's the blood of all of my enemies. <laughs> Shit. Dark. That went dark quickly. <laughs> you want me to be drinking Bill. some 20 year old kid's blood? <laughs> I just asked, was it? I didn't. Yeah. Just inquiring minds want to know. Well, it's obviously blood of some sort. Obviously blood. Uh, hey guys, is- uh, I have a question, Nick. This might cheer you up because it's a, a question about Eternals. You've seen Eternals, right? Yeah. And I know we don't want to talk because we you talked about it last week, but I have a couple of questions because I missed last week. week. You know when they went into um, the their spaceship and it was buried underground. Yeah. Uh, but the girl that was really fast. The, the, the girl was already there. Couldn't speak. How was she already there? And how, and how did she have all that extra food, modern day food stuff? Or did she get that after they lifted it out of the ground? I assume I assumed she was always there. Yeah, I assume there's Me a too. cave or something that goes to the. Don't so we never it saw her. It? Well, we never saw her between the time that they disbanded and they found yeah, so her. I assume she was the buried ship. underground. So where did she get all the modern day food then? If she was buried there since Byzantine. Maybe she like did the super flash thing and burrowed her way out. Vibrated through things. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. My, in my head, Bazing. Cannon, she got all that stuff once they dug her up because she's so damn fast. She just went to she went to the local supermarket. <laughs> that would be better. That's I also that. possible. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, they don't need to eat, right? But they were, yeah. But then there was that bit where they were fighting over. Where they swapped the packet. Was that an in joke that I missed? Where they, he, where Icarus, Icarus wanted, Icarus was reading a tablet, and the other one was eating some cookies. Oh and they yeah. Noticed that they each wanted. To, I can't remember who the guy was. The it was the uh, uh, the mind control the mental guy. guy. Yeah, Druid. 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 <laughs> Druid. Druid. I don't know. No, they no, have to eat. Right, I think well, there's like several dinner scenes in that movie. I don't think that that yeah, means they, that I'm, they need like Superman. There have been a couple of occasions where like yeah, I don't have to eat like i choose to maybe they just enjoyed it right they just enjoyed the act of eating and another question where does it's ego like fit in this because ego is an eternal celestial. Right? Uh, sorry a, uh, celestial. a uh, celestial so I is he an experiment know. that went wrong is he one of the grand guys experiment so i that think wrong? that he is between the um what we've seen because that they're not celestials right the um no they're eternals no, the no, no, creatures no. Are the, the creatures oh, that's the title of the movie. <laughs> yeah, no. no the big it's guys weird are because celestials. ego, ego right. does not yeah. seem like he's on that same level. I think that's that's what ego, I, ego, ego is a celestial. I know, but I'm yeah, saying, in, like, in terms of like his output, he does not seem like he's on the same level as the judge. That was my question, Jammer. How does ego fit in? Because he's a celestial, but he didn't say he came bursting out of a planet. He said he was floating around in space when he first became conscious or aware yeah but with the brain of the non celestial that would be the same thing yeah you don't always know like i don't remember fighting my way out of my mom's c-section so no but the way they explained celestials was their birth was coming out of a planet and they already knew right if a planet exploded around you like i don't think that you would know that that's necessarily what happened right oh it 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 was just a brain when they come out of the planet they're already like humanoid form though aren't they that's that was the whole thing they came out with Maybe yeah, he's a preemie. He's Maybe he's a preemie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like they shouldn't have called him a celestial. I think yeah, that's what I'm species. saying. Like he does not seem the same Over. as Leave it. the judge Leave it. or even the head Go that on. we saw in Guardians, the first one. Because yeah, that's a nowhere. celestial's yeah, that's head. Celestial's nowhere. Head. Yeah. Yep. So they Go seem on. somehow distinctly different. Well, I was thinking that the guy that was creating the celestials, I can't remember his name, he, he made a mistake Judge. with the with the Arson. deviants, right? He said he made a mistake, he gave them awareness and <clears> stuff. <throat> so maybe he, he was a mistake his first times of creating um, celestials. Everybody's first time is a mistake. <laughs> exactly. Well, same thing. 
was never that impressive either. So Eagle wasn't yeah. that impressive. So yeah. I don't know. But that's why my question was, where does he fit in with the Celestials? Because he was one, apparently, and doesn't match what we saw in Eternals. Planet you know birthing why? and all that you know stuff. why? Not a good movie. Actually. Why? Tell me why. Not a, not a good movie. Anyway. <laughs> that's I'm not, not sure. the reason why. <laughs> Danny, what I'm did not. you think of it? You like I, that? I, I liked it like you did, Jamma. I liked it because it was uh, doing something different. I liked it because it was not the regular formulaic stuff. I do have these these questions, and that's why I just, I just threw them out quickly while we were waiting for you to log on. But I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. But at the same time, my nephews found it fucking boring, as you saw. They were fidgeting all the way through. And so, I don't know. I, I, was I got the impression that they liked it. Well, yeah, that was afterwards. I was sitting there in the movies <laughs> with them, mate, and they were all over the fucking shop. They were, yeah, <laughs> so they what, were not what I'm gathering is that you goosed their uh, their review. Like, it was good, right? It was good. Like, yeah, I guess no, I did. Uncle Danny, I think like, <laughs> <laughs> it's when I pointed the camera at them, I think they felt like they had to say something positive. And I actually, no, tell, tell the boys what you thought. Like oh, every really reviewer good. ever, <laughs> right? No. <laughs> From they somebody are. like, oh, yeah, no. you're, huh, what? I feel like people by nature are negative. No, but I feel like once you get like once you're on camera, you're more likely to to do a thing. Like even if you don't like yeah. an actor's project, you're like, oh, how's it going? Blah blah blah. George Clooney got to talk to you about whatever the fuck project that you made. Well, that's if you're talking directly to George Clooney. Yeah, they're kids. They don't know the difference. It's, that's different. Yeah. They're, they're not children. talking to George Clooney. They're children. No. I'm saying that the same mentality We're stars. is for children. <laughs> I was on 60 Minutes and my kids are like, you're going to be on TV today, Daddy? It's like, that was a one-off thing. You were on 60 Minutes? When? Uh, September. Why didn't you tell us? I could have logged into my non-existent cable subscription. Nobody needs to see that. (laughs) Go watch that. Hey, Nick, what did you think of it? Because I don't think we got your opinion on it either. Eternals? Yeah. Um, I thought you did. It was okay. It's a... I don't know. It's my... It's, I don't know why people think it's worse than uh, Incredible Hulk and Thor 2. That's crazy. Oh, fuck Cause they're, that's because Jonesy is stupid. Oh, wait, no. Jonesy no, no, no I'm that. talking about wait, Rotten Tomatoes. Worst? Having it the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score of all. It's like, I mean, of people are, are like, it is the worst. I'm like, no, it isn't. It's the bottom. It is. I like, I like Incredible Hulk 10 times better than this. See? He's stupid. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even consider it canon. Thor, Thor 2? Uh, I don't know. I, it depends. I do. I do. I feel like you, you got it's the Loki factor. Thor too. You got the Loki no. factor. It no. Loki factor is the only positive part of that yeah. movie. We rewatched it for the other podcast recently. Um, I gave it like a, a C, C minus. There we go. It's it's That's probably, passing. It's bottom five. It's bottom five, but it's still Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's not so. bottom five. It's bottom feed at the is. bottom five. What what is on? Hold on, MCU list. All right, let me let me see. We got time for this. Listen, we we don't don't have time for this. Listen, no, listen, no, listen, no, no, no. Listen, listen, no. We don't have time for this. We have podcast. We got to go. We got to go. Are we doing that right now? No, this is not the show. This can't be the show. Can't be the show. You can't be the show. This is not the show, Jerry. It's not the show. You guys ready to do a podcast while Jammer looks up this thing? Yeah. Oh, we've done that, that two blessing. times. Two times. It's because I'm drinking a carbonated beverage and I don't drink. What are you drinking? Often. What's your beverage? What are you drinking? Is it a bubbly? Is it a bubbly? It's an, Please be it's a bubbly. It's an Izzy. Fuck you. I actually did not. Rhea Chipotle. Rhea Chipotle. Yeah. 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 yeah I know what you're doing. I can divine your whole future just by what you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I think it's better than uh, Iron Man two. It's, it's better great. than. I think it's better than the Incredible Hulk. No. I think it's, I think it's better than the first Avenger because I hated the second half. Oh, no, disagree! I hate it. Listen, hated. The listen. Hold on, let me get, let me let me let me finish. Better than the Dark World. Yes. Maybe. It is better than Age of first Ultron. Thor. I put it better. Than no, first Thor. you're out of your fucking Ultron. mind. No, I don't think at it's this not, point. It's not. It's not, point, it's, not, it's, not it's not better. Than, it's not. It's not. No, it's not better than the first Thor. Yeah, the it's, not, it's not better. It's not mind. better than the first Thor. It's not it better is. than the first Thor. You're on drugs. But, but um, it's not better than any Avengers movie, especially not Age of Ultron. I don't think. Uh, I think it's better than Ant Man and the Wasp. No. No. I think it's better than Captain Marvel. No. What is in that Izzy? What the fuck? That's it. That's it. That's it's it's bottom. It's bottom ten. Because it's, I think it's the eighth worst movie, in my mind. 
want so many jokes right now. It's, on, it's number four from the bottom for me. There. So you, you did it's definitely in the one. bottom it is five. Than Easy. Thor. Easy bottom five. Anyway. Yeah. <sighs> let me introduce the this show so I can, yeah let me let me let me introduce the podcast so i can just cut all of this bullshit out hello and welcome to breaking geek radio the podcast the premier flagship and international podcast of lrm online if you can hear the anger in my voice it's because jammer was just saying some bullshit that i'm gonna edit out of the show so <laughs> enjoy that enjoy that anyway we've got a ton of news we've got so much news uh it's not impossible though um because I don't believe in impossible scenarios, right, Nick? That's right. That's right. So Kobe 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 Maru. Maru, baby. Hell nah. We got this. Yeah. Um, first, so one of the things I was going to talk about, this isn't really a news story. I just kind of wanted to get it out of the way. We got two new trailers or trailers, whoo, two new posters for The Matrix 4. And there is a domestic poster and there's an international poster. And the international poster is way better. That's all I want to say. Like, I don't understand why international posters are almost always better than the domestic ones. So the U.S. trailer or trailer poster is the one where you see all the protagonists standing there. Neo's got his hand up in classic pose, posy pose. And Morpheus is standing like a red pill. Although I can't unsee the fact that he's basically dressed like um, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. He's just missing the yellow vest. So he's obviously yeah. a red pill, apparently. Uh, but then the international poster is just Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss walking down the street. It, to me, it's it's much more reminiscent of the older movies and gets me more excited for the uh, for the sequel, even though I don't. He's holding up his hand in the domestic one. Yeah, I don't want that. Don't give me that. <laughs> That's give all me, Neo does. He holds up his hand. Give me the walkies. Give me the I like walkies. the walkie better. First, I thought you were going to bring up that you thought they were different because some countries didn't want the other race characters on the poster. Oh, is that a thing? I don't know. That's why I thought you were going to bring it up. Like maybe. God damn it, Nick. I thought you had like hard hitting news. No, no, no. I thought that's where you were going. But yeah, I like the international one better too. Not because it removed the minorities. Okay. No. (laughs) Well, I like it exclusively because it removed the minorities. I know. Confirm. Nick Dahl is not a racist. He's like, hey, listen. It's not why I like um, it. <laughs> yeah, uh, they look. I mean, they both look fine. I don't care about. I don't care about posters usually that much. Um, no, no. But I, when I watched Ghostbusters last night, I saw the Matrix trailer there again. I like that trailer. I like. I like that song. I saw it in the big screen. I like that song. That song it always makes any, everything better. It's a good song. Yeah, it's a good song. I agree. Um, speaking of trailers, it was weird getting to see the a new Spider-Man trailer on the big screen. I don't think it really matters. I think I was already more excited to see this. Um, It's frustrating to me that the reasons why I want to see Spider-Man movies has nothing to do with Spider-Man. So this one, we get a little bit more substance, right? So I think, Nick, you're probably more excited for this trailer than anybody here. I saw you put the little heart emoji when I posted in the news. Nick, can you tell us why this trailer excites you for spider-man well unlike you i'm always excited for spider-man movies so i love the homecoming and the far from home trailers too but willem dafoe and alfred molina man it's really all it's about like the problem is is that spider-man 2 is really boring that's the problem yeah yeah i didn't actually freeze i'm just like you. I know that. I was Spider-Man laughing. Spider-Man 2? The original was... Spider-Man 2? Yeah, I hate it. It's boring. Wait, with Alfred Molina, you think that's boring? Now you're oh, on so crack again. So boring. What is with you when you're more like a takes. regular movie? Also, can I also say this really quick? No. Eternals is better than Incredible Hulk. It's better than no. Iron Man no. 2. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> just going to delete that Spider-Man shit out and call it technical difficulties. Five, not Marvel movie, but superhero movie. No. No, absolutely, yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's like it's Winter Soldier, that like Logan, maybe Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Um, yeah, you say Logan. maybe the Dark Knight. Ugh. Oh, sometimes I switch Dark Knight and Batman Begins. It's like it sucks. Winter Batman Soldier, Batman Endgame, friggin' Dark Knight. Uh, what were the ones you named? Blade. I don't like Blade that much. Personally. All right, we're moving on. We're moving the fuck on. Anyway. Before I hang up on <laughs> oh, you. Well, well, we were talking about this trailer. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Uh, it's cool to see the old villains come back, even though Kyle and I just 
watch rewatch Amazing Spider-Man one and two, and there's not more than like ten minutes of good footage between the two films. Yeah. Before I kick it over to Jammer and Danny, the other thing that I will say about this trailer, like it's frustrating because I feel like they gave away a lot in this trailer. Um, I would have liked seeing what appears to be an emotional beat live, like in the movie theater, where there's a conversation that happens between Peter and Doc Ock, where it seems like Peter understands like, oh, I don't want this to happen, right? I, I want to save these people and I would like to have seen that in the theater, but- you you like to see it in the in the trailer or in the, in the, movie? In the actual movie? Okay, so you you don't you don't see that. Okay, got it. Yeah, I can see that. I'm realizing. Speaking of bad takes, oh god, I uh, full of them today. I found my kryptonite when it comes to trailers in a good way. I like a trailer when it telegraphs the emotional arc of the character a lot. Because I'm like, oh, fuck. I can't wait to see that emotional arc happen. Um, I don't think we got it in this movie because I don't know where his arc is going or what he's going to be thinking. Um, but that's just, we'll put a pin in that for later. But that's just a bad take that I have when it comes to trailers. Something's um, wrong with you today. I'm going to blame the Chipotle. Okay. Did you blame get a bowl or a burrito? Bowl or a burrito? A burrito. That was your first mistake. Danny. No. What did you oh, think okay. of the trailer? I didn't even talk about the trailer yet. I was going to talk about Same, the finish, You Jonathan. did. You said that it didn't. You said that you didn't get an emotional arc. You were like, here's my bad take. What? No. Okay. Continue. What What? What else would you like to say? I, I don't want to say it anymore. Good. I'm just Danny. Gonna, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it gave away too much. I would rather have had a little bit less. Some uh, of everything it seemed to be like throw everything that we think the fans want to see and to shut them the fuck up uh and then we'll see how excited everybody gets and they did i would have preferred to have seen a little bit less um and had a little bit more anticipation for the for the film however i know marvel are quite smart about this stuff now and i think there's a few red herrings in there about what's actually going to happen and what the actual themes are i do think that some of the bad guys are not going to be that bad and that's why peter's um like a little bit torn between. yeah i think yeah. so but the other side of it is that's going to annoy me if peter's that naive still after three films and all this stuff that's going on is that he's still that naive that would annoy me a little bit if not even like, way. Oh, why does everybody have to die well because if they've all come through some sort of portal that dr strange has accidentally opened or agatha's opened or fucking sinestro's opened or whoever's opened <laughs> Uh, whatever um, then, <laughs> then I, I, think, insult, I right. think you've got to be smart enough to know that um that that's not a good thing for this particular world that we live in so for him to suddenly start fucking things up to stop um dr strange closing the portal or killing them all or sending them back or whatever i think that would make him a little bit naive in that sense but again i think marvel is smarter than that and whatever they've led us path they've led us down could quite easily do a, yeah. a backflip twist turn and change and that's so, what i kind of like about it i don't think they've given us it given it away but i do think they gave us too much in the trailer so what i find interesting about what you're saying there is one other thing out there so there is an international trailer for mm -hmm. this and i think it was mm -hmm. brazil and one of the brazil. shots Brazil. Um, one of the shots that they show, the scene where Peter Parker is jumping at the villains, villains. Yeah. in their trailer, it goes on a little bit longer and Lizard's head like snaps. Yeah, he gets like, punched, right? Someone yeah. punches him, right? Yeah. Someone. Yeah. And so we've well, yeah. seen them edit trailers, do some clever editing. Mm -hmm. So again, for me, I don't care like about seeing the other Spider-Man. That's not the thing for me. So if that's the thing that they're hiding that they think is going to be the thing, Good for yeah. them. Um, that would be even me. cooler. I'm really mm. what we're only seeing three of the villains. Billion what if it was a? Oh. Uh, <laughs> what if it was Doc Ock and Peter fighting side by side? I think they like are gonna the worst the villains. Villains. I think I'm it's gonna, gonna happen. Well, yeah, so I, mean, like, gonna happen. I mean, that's I, we're basically guaranteed to get the other Spider-Man at this point. I mean, we'll I can tell you what's gonna happen. I'd love to see Doc Ock I, and him together fighting. What's gonna happen is this. They're gonna fight together. Like they're gonna have some moment where he's gonna be like, no, no, you gotta let us die, Peter. And he is the one that sacrifices himself to do Just that. Just like he did in Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Just like he did in Spider-Man yep. 2. In that really no, boring okay. movie. That's my um point. so really <laughs> quick. Uh I'm surprised that Sony and Marvel haven't revealed that actually shown the other Spider-Man yet Uderman? in the movies, in the trailers. 
like I'm, I'm like it's like that wouldn't you want to show that to get people I, in theaters i don't think it matters i think everyone assumes uh but everyone love, that or we they love assume. the villains and we or assume just in general everyone's going to see this movie even without other villains or spider-man i mean or other spider but i think i think there would be more movie. people i think there would be more people who would see it if they knew the other spider-man were going to be there who were like aren't really tapped into it and they see oh they That's have my spider mcguire back yeah i don't understand why they're not showing them they're showing everything I, else except for that i don't know i think marvel is would be the one who didn't want to show them and sony would have wanted to show them maybe god we'll see We'll find out. Yeah, we'll like find out. I think there's going to be another. 17th? Yeah, but I also think there's going to be another trailer. Please, because Personally. it wasn't called please, final please trailer. Not. Yep. Yep. Do they even call movies final trailers anymore, or is it just like trailers? I guess they do. I mean, it, so it just depends. Like, yeah. It's it's completely random. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I mean, it'll be out in the public almost immediately, though. So. Like, what do you mean? Probably a TV well, spot on Saturday after it comes. There's out. There's no way they would do that. You don't think so? So, what do you mean like, well, that, reveal like, it in like a tv spot after the fact like right after it comes out be like hey Toby no Meyer. i bet they i think i think next right will. i think they will like a week after it comes out i think a they week will. after and obviously everyone else is going to tell all their friends who didn't see spider-man they're like hey it's got the other guys the older guys in it or the younger guys in it or whichever I want you to tell all your friends about me yeah <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> I'm the fine. vulture shows up Spooder and says man. that <laughs> You guys ready to move on? Tell your friends. Oh, wait, I, I do want to talk to Danny. Danny uh, is, is has been the curmudgeon in us. In us, that's not. <laughs> he's in. He's been the curmudgeon within oh, the group yeah. about the multiverse. About multiverse. Not, phase four. Phase four. Um, and he he feels like there's something wrong with him. I'm here I'm to right tell there. you, Danny. There's nothing wrong with you. If phase four, if you're not feeling phase four, you know, obviously, I think there are some good stories that we've had so far. But at the same time, maybe A, they didn't click with you because they just weren't the type of stories you want to tell. It might also just be that you're over it, you know, because I, I don't know about you, but like sometimes with long running series or just in general, there's a point where it's like things kind of end. It's like, you know what? I could stop reading now, be completely satisfied. And you just, for one reason or another, can't go beyond it. And that's okay. That's totally normal. And that might just be where you're at at this point. I also feel yeah. all the TV shows have been better than all the movies. I'm so you mean for this phase? The movies have been disappointing so far. In this I think phase. he's talking about Star Wars. <laughs> That's who. Um, anyway, Danny, sorry. I, I don't just, Danny's know about to speak I and I interrupted that. him. Oh, I go ahead, Danny. Danny. So what were you going to say, Danny? You don't agree that, that no, no, I think or I... Visions or anything else that we've gotten? We're not talking <laughs> about Star Wars. God damn it. Oh, you said you didn't know if you agree with that. Because I'm thinking about, okay, let Danny talk first and then we'll jump into my thing. I've forgotten what the question was that I was. What, what, what am I responding to? What oh, you said. So Jam. I think yeah, he you, wanted you to know. Right. Yeah. 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 You might be right, Jam. I think it, it, there's after because I wasn't as excited as everybody was about One Division. That was to me that was slow and meandering and and dull. And so that could well have been the um, end game hangover for me. But I really I did really enjoy the Spider Man. But that. That Spider-Man that came out, what was that one? Far From Home, right? The Spider-Man that yeah. came out after Endgame, it felt like that was that was like the prologue, uh, the um, epilogue to Endgame. So that was more the little sprinkle of fairy dust on the bow tie wrapped up present that we had in Endgame. Everything after that, I just, yeah, I think you're right, Dan. It's like, come on, you, you need to give me some, give me something tangible rather than this, it could be fucking anything and everything, which is what I feel we got at the moment with the multiverse, Eternals, and everything well, else. Right now, it looks like they're throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. And I'd rather see something a little bit get my teeth into at the moment. But that might take a few films, right? Because even so short, think, or, or it may enough. it may never happen. That too, it might I never happen again. I feel like that's a bad yeah. thing because I think we're we're. So you said a few films. We're kind of already at the few films level. Not only are we at True. the few films level, we've had several shows, and I think at this point in the first iteration of the MCU. Um, we kind of had, had an idea two of where of the, this was going yeah. and we're yeah. not there yet. And I think the thing yeah. that would help get people excited is if we, if we had more inklings of where we were going and that, so yeah. is that King, yeah. is that Kang or is that what's going to happen with Agatha? Is that going to, 
what's happening with the Eternals. Yeah. And like you said about exactly. throwing spaghetti yeah. at the wall, like we're kind of there yet where we don't have like, for lack of a better term, we don't have an end game for this phase. Yeah. Um, an idea of where we're going. So what is the thesis statement for this phase of the MCU? Multiverse. Think- that's it. You know, yeah, that's not, <laughs> but that in and of itself is insufficient. I, no, I agree. They're exploring. I think this shouldn't even be called a phase and they're exploring multiple storylines throughout. You have like your tech storyline going you have your multiverse storyline, your Kang storyline. There's going to be a Gamma storyline with the She-Hulk and other projects like that. I just think we're seeing the characters almost more break off into their own worlds because they're able to use TV series, not just movies. Like Hawkeye looks like it probably has nothing to do with anything else that's going on in the universe, but it looks fantastic. It looks so good. That's I'm a so great standalone. That yeah. <laughs> like they um, had the clip during Disney Plus Day and I was blown away by like seeing a minute and a half clip. I was like, this looks fun. They even got Christmas music. <laughs> cement that it's a christmas show (laughs) but i was saying the thing i disagreed with you on i think is as far as you said you think the shows are better than the movies for this phase i don't think that's true no i was talking about star wars why are you talking about star wars why aren't you picking up what i'm putting down (laughs) i was already talking about (laughs) okay well i was about to say i think i liked black widow and i think i liked black widow and shang chi better than most of the shows i think the only show i really really liked like i think i liked the idea of wandavision and it was fun to watch but ultimately a bit shallow um loki i really liked Mm -hmm. for most of it falcon (laughs) and winter soldier has fallen flatter the more i think about it Mm. um it's a much better version of black widow (laughs) i I think what bothers me about falcon and winter soldier even more so you talked about falling flatter i feel like the news that we talked about last week where they were like, we're going to put him through the ring mm. we're going to make him earn it. Like that makes the series like, well, what the fuck was I just watching? Mm. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be the other thing they're juggling is like balancing, not making film watchers only feel left out, letting them be a part of it. Like everyone, mm-hmm. both TV and movie, having a, a, a reason, a quote unquote reason for the multiverse. You know, we have Loki and then we now have Spider-Man. So it's just like, pick your poison. It's whatever you want it to be. You know, it either this happened or that happened. Or, you know, he became, you know, uh, Captain America in this show and he's going to become Captain America in the movie. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, I wonder if they're just trying to balance that, like what they, how they interweave those things and making sure that things matter, even if they ultimately don't matter. It's, it's, you know what it reminds me of? Balancing it act. reminds me of the Power Rangers. When the Power Rangers movie came out in like 1990, six seven maybe five yeah maybe five um what was funny about that was the movie they went lost their powers got new powers and then they're like well how do we make this work for the tv show that was actually a completely different dimension like a different storyline it was an alternate universe and so in the tv show they had to get the same powers in a different way so like that's almost what this is it doesn't quite work i should have stopped talking about it but that's I mean, I think, I think it makes sense. That makes sense. I can see that. So I would like say it's, it's close enough of a comparison, even if it's not one to one. I would say a better comparison is a uh, like you have your main like comic arc, like Secret Empire or uh, Secret Wars or Civil War running, and then the comics. I mean, the TV shows feel like well, they're the tie-in comics, like yeah. Spider-Man, Secret Wars, you know, Civil War, like because whenever they have a big event. And then they encourage you to get all the books that tie in, but most people just buy the big event. I feel like the yeah. little asterisks that we would get in comic books where it's like confused reference. Yeah. Uh, comic book number <laughs> da, 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 da. So by the time we get yeah. to like where King the Conqueror shows up, you're like, who the fuck is this guy? It's like, oh no, reference Loki episode. Da, 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 da. Like <laughs> Luis is the one who pops up and says, it yeah, from Ant-Man. <laughs> like, confused. That just reminds me, reminds me of some of the really shitty, you guys know about fan subs in the anime community? So a fan, basically back in the early 2000s, you'd have fan groups that would come in and do subtitles for oh, shows. Oh, like fan fiction, kind of. No, 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 no. Fan subtitle. They would come in and subtitle a show. And oh. that way, and they would release it online so that people who, A, don't want to f- pay money can watch it, or B, maybe it's a show that wasn't available in America, could watch it and enjoy it. And uh, fan subgroups, they, they did a service back in the day, but now totally unnecessary. So don't be a fan sub dick. Uh, anyway, they uh, were really precious about Japanese words. 
And if you know the the Death Note anime, Mm -hmm. there's, you know, Light is all about like his big plans. And there's this one line where he says, it's all according to the plan, except this, except uh, a fan group, fan subtitling group decided to, oh, no, 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 no. Plan isn't a strong enough word. We need to keep the original Japanese word and then explain what the Japanese words mean in a note oh. at the top. So he says, <laughs> it, it's going according to Keikaku. And then at the top, it says Keikaku means plan. It's just like, <laughs> what's... What was that the point of that? Sense. What's the point like, of that? I feel like that's like we did it. We did it, guys. We did it. <laughs> Got around the wait. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to move on? Yeah, we got yes, we got a couple more trailers. Um, only one of which I'm actually excited about, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Pixar's turning red. Oops. Looks like a lot of fun. So we got a trailer for Pixar's next feature. It is the directorial debut of Domi Shi, and that's the person who directed Bao. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It was it's very short. disturbing. It's it very is, heartwarming right? and very disturbing. And also, in it retrospect, is. tying it in, kind of reminds me of some shit that we saw in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. You know I'm, talking, I'm sorry, sorry the what now? I, Ghostbusters. Don't spoil <laughs> Ghostbusters until the end. I think, He's not I think, spoiling Ghostbusters. He's spoiling Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is is whenever we whenever we watch put a trailer up i always start playing it and just so i can kind of reference it as we're talking and so what happened was i played it and as it, it went really loud in my headphones so i couldn't hear myself talk so i said <laughs> gus busters <laughs> gus busters <laughs> anyways go ahead keep, keep so going anyway Jonesy. yeah so we uh Rosalie Shang and uh, Sandra O oh are going to be leading this one. I love the energy from this one. Um, I feel like it has a very different energy than some of the Pixar stuff we've seen. I think the closest thing to it that I can recall is Inside Out. But yeah, I it seems so. like over and above that. So I'm, I'm super excited for it. How about you guys? Yeah, for I me. I, I, piece. <laughs> I haven't watched well, the trailer. Just, I forgot. Well, you really don't care. You don't like animated stuff that much, anyway. I like Pixar usually. I could. I like will it. say I saw the trailer for Encanto on a uh, last movie. I Encanto. Went to. Encanto. I'm um, American saying. <laughs> Encanto. Encanto. Uh, <laughs> no, but turning red. Uh, so I really like it because, uh, as I mentioned, this was like a plant, and now it comes the payoff. I talked about I really like seeing telegraphed arcs and trailers. And in this one, you get this girl who's just like a fucking this teen really woman. she's she's totally like loud and proud who she is. And she's always on and she's always like high performing and probably like super type A and this and that. And over the course of this, seeing red this wrench that gets thrown in where she turns into a giant red panda. Uh, learns that oh maybe I don't always have to be the best and so yeah I'm hearing Danny I think was playing the trailer uh, and yeah and anyways that that was totally telegraphed in this trailer and I'm just like oh I could see the arc the arc is there I'm in yeah I can feel the tears welling up I think <laughs> the other thing that I like about this is it seems like between this and Encanto we're getting um a, an interesting like magical realism almost type of thing in mm. disney now where like this is happening more consistently consistently so this like Kanto and um, the last dragon coco raya, the- raya? no raya, raya and the last too, dragon that's that's more of a high fantasy yeah no oh okay so magical real for those who don't know i mean i'm sure you're not the only one who doesn't know so magical realism usually takes place in i'm not saying in this i'm saying for I'm the joking. for the <laughs> oh you weren't you were joking no 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 i was joking when i made like what the fuck are you talking down to me about oh okay hand you um, can keep going <laughs> anyway so magical realism is essentially like more grounded in the real world but then like there's some weird things kind of happening that are like just a little bit off but usually takes place in our world whereas high fantasy takes place in an alternate world like a middle earth well i guess it's not really alternate because it's technically supposed to be england like thousands <laughs> of years ago um like a fucking what's another place Where's what's another fantasy place? New York City. No. Narnia. <laughs> Narnia. 
Well, no, because that's a portal fantasy. It takes it starts off in our world. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Dude, uh, I don't know. I'm getting the impression that the writer here doesn't know what no, uh, high fantasy uh, is. Uh, well, That's... I'm trying to think of of one that I've read that other people have read because I was about to say like Roshar, but you guys don't know what the fuck Roshar is. Nope. Um, like One Piece, like the One Piece world. I don't, it takes whatever. place. It doesn't take place anywhere. There's no Earth. Basically, when there's no Earth in this world. So Star Wars. That's it's high fantasy. But there might be an no, Earth there, there because might be. it's in space. And it's a long time ago in a yeah. galaxy far, far away. Yeah, far, far, far away from away. what? here but that's not that's not yeah, really that's, that's still but well, anyways i don't know anyways magical realism is more based in reality with like a little bit of a weird twist like an m night Shyamalan movie where the people don't fucking act like people wow it's like wow. that it's like the worst example no it's the best example have you watched lady in the water recently i think neil, that's a magical neil realism game. pick movie. any neil gaiman thing that's magical realism except not all of it because stardust is high fantasy good omens though right. good omens is a. Uh... Yeah, that Harry would be Potter count. good omens. Uh, I would say that's. I would just say yeah. I would say that skews. It has fancy realistic aspects, but I would still call that fantasy, but not a high fantasy. Okay. What about what about Danny's proposition? Hogwarts. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. That is a just a fantasy. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Not an owl, uh, Harry. Uh, <laughs> guys, ready to move on? Yes. No, oh, I don't think we were done. Did you? Oh, what do you we think of the trailer, Danny? <laughs> well, today, oh yeah, Danny. About? Did you just watch it? I love you watching it as we're talking. Yeah, I know. I really did. I, I loved. I, I didn't even know that was. I did. I must have missed that in the news piece. But I watched it. and It looks beautiful, and I, I didn't even need to hear it to know exactly what Jammer was talking about. I could tell by the trailer just by watching it that that's the kind of arc it had, and it looks beautiful. I love Pixar stuff, but they they've made this one look great. I'm super excited just by watching it without even hearing the trailer. When, so I'm in. When does it come out? Because we just got a Pixar trailer. March. Wow, so it comes out before Lightyear. Is this the second trailer for yeah. it? Yeah, this is yeah. the second so trailer. Advertising the original one came out. The I original one for familiar. this one came out four months ago, I think. You were super excited for it then, Jammer. Yeah, I mean, you know me, I like my I animated shit. Cool. Yeah. I thought Encanto yeah. was the... the uh, Encanto. That's Disney. Encanto was the next one. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's Disney. Disney. That's current. That's right now. That's and not, that comes oh, out sorry, that's not the Pixar one, is it? Sorry. No, you're right, Jammer. Yeah, that's not Pixar. God I damn, always right? confuse them too. Remember, I thought Ryan the Last Dragon was, I claimed it was Pixar at one point. And you guys like, you're an idiot. I'm like, yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that didn't happen. That doesn't sound like me. I never would do that to you. <laughs> we also, what you can't see is the halo over James. By the way, head. last thing, what? last thing. Why Thank didn't you. they call this movie Seeing Red? Red? Why didn't they call it Seeing Red? Why is it called Turning Red? Seeing Red is a way better title. Because Seeing Red is about anger. Yeah. Turning she's red turning. is about. Yeah. She's literally turning. No, red. I get it. I get it. She's literally it turning like red. It. it doesn't, doesn't have to be like a literal it. meaning. It could be a seeing red thing. That makes perfect sense. I think it's a play on she's the not angry, seeing though. red. Is it? Is it a play on that? I think so. No, no turning red. Like those have so. different. Is rough, turning like, red an expression? Yeah, you're embarrassed. Oh, shit. Uh, I didn't think of that. Uh, what? I think it. I think it implies that you're a communist and they didn't want to touch on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's what they oh, should yeah. have called it, Red Scare. Also, definitely, <laughs> definitely a metaphor for a period. I think, obviously. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. I definitely is, oh, is you're a right. metaphor yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah, I'm not kidding. 100%. Especially when the dad was like, the dad was for like, the it's dad. happening already? <laughs> it's happening already. It's puberty, baby. It's like, dang it, I thought I had another year. I mean, it's it's amazing to me. Like it again, it just feels very teen wolfy to me, and I like it absolutely. But better, yeah. So, except with an anyway. actual teen and not like a twenty five year old playing a teen. What? What? Or thirty year old? I don't know how old he was when Michael J. Fox was pretty young when he played. Uh... Was he? I I think so. He... I don't know. Alex Keating. I know he was eighty seven when he played Marty McFly. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of time travel. Yeah, roughly he was the same age as when Toby Maguire played uh, Peter Parker. Yeah, that's and Andrew Garfield. Those are pretty horrendous examples, but that's like, yeah, <laughs> it's a classic. We're gonna move thing. on. We're moving on. We're we're, we're gonna take this turn. We're gonna move it on. Halo. Halo got a trailer. Super quick teaser trailer. Paramount Plus. So it seems like Paramount Plus is like, hey guys, we're all about that sci-fi, right? So instead of the Sci-Fi Channel being the home for sci-fi, Paramount Plus is gonna be the home for sci-fi. They get all the Star Treks. Now they got themselves a halo. 
Uh, we got a teaser trailer seeing Master Chief don the iconic Spartan armor. Uh, any of you guys, Halo players? Any? Any? I was for the first two. Oh, yeah, me too. oh, yeah. 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 For the first so two, the I was like, I put so many hours into those, like hundreds of hours into the first two, and then so after wait, that, I fell off. Before we move on to the trailer, so you don't have an Xbox jammer, right? No, I mean this. I mean Halo's been around for three Xbox generations, so it's like. Yeah, I mean, do you have a current? I, no, God. Or no. even a one, because you can yeah. download the new Halo on. Xbox no, I don't, I haven't That's had an I Xbox. I haven't had access to an Xbox regularly since 360. Danny, you want to play? We should play. What's that? Th- I, I can't do. I just just talking about what, what or touching on what Jammer just said. It was that game. It was Halo. Three that that when I completed that after spending two stop it stop teasing was spending so many hours on it that I had to then sell my I had to fucking get a life. I just imagine Danny like I, I imagine before before he sold the Xbox he looked like that guy from Dune and now he's just cut. He's just like I had to get rid of it. <laughs> I was thinking he looked like Gollum. It's like somebody coming in, turn off the turn off the Xbox. My precious, my precious. I had to. It was drove me bonkers. So it's the last game I played. I got rid of it. I had Call of Duty in the cellophane wrapping still and refused to open it because I did not need another reason to stay indoors. So I haven't played it since then. So no. yeah. I, so the thing for me about this trailer is it, it doesn't really do anything for me. They've talked about. Um, a a the show or a movie since like forever it's gone through multiple and that's all that's got, that's yeah the i think the only thing that interests me about this is the fact that pablo schreiber is going to be master chief and i i really enjoy him and his presence so if you guys have ever seen american gods um or i can't think of something else he's been in a bunch of stuff like you see his face what's his name josie sorry pablo wait, schreiber name? Um, S-C-H-R-E-I-B-E-R. He's a, yep. He's a huge dude. Um, he's got the funny thing is like the attitude that I enjoy from him is not oh, yeah. what you would get from Master Chief. And so um I think the only thing I'm looking forward to, to is is that, like his performance. That said, Halo to me is not something that I need to have adapted. Right. To me, it, it is just fine as a video game. But it'll be interesting to see what they do. I mean, I knew I plot. wanted it back in the day, but it's just been so long since like it's been they missed the boat. They missed the boat like a decade ago, back when yeah. it was first getting turned into it by Peter Jackson. Like that was that was when you could strike. That was when the iron was hot. Now I'm like, there's so many other big franchises out there. It's just like it's just one of many. Yep. yep. I mean, it's always been one of many, but like even more. I'd probably watch it just because I don't even know much about Halo, so it'd be like a new experience for me. Probably watch it. I, I guess if, if you're if you're a yeah, sci-fi totally fan cool. or a fan of sci-fi, uh, you know, action or military sci-fi type stuff, and you you're not into video games, and the show comes out, I think it'll scratch a niche for you. But I'm just curious as far as how it'll, what it's going to adapt exactly. Like, do we need, yeah. do we need the story adapted? I say no. I say I'll watch uh, it the same way. I'm gonna watch. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, just knowing nothing about the source material anyway. So, I mean, sometimes it's the best way to go into it. Yeah. I mean, I already know Wheel of Time just came out uh, this year. Is that out too? Oh my God. That just came out. The first three episodes, I think. I don't know. But I know some, at least three, at least some time has come out. Some of it has come out. And I know Wheel of Time fans are already bitching up a storm. Sound, they're, they're starting sound like Star Wars fans. It's just, I don't like You know what's crazy? I was all excited that foundation the season finale is this week but then yesterday we got star trek there's yeah. new episodes of arcane another episode of morning show more wheel yep. of time it's like yep i'm i'm cowboy I'm Bebop. happy cowboy be oh god tiger I'm king too one. y'all i've started and, that anyway anyway um <laughs> I, I just there's just so much stuff to watch um there's too much and i still need to finish shadow and bone which is a show i don't really like that much but i want to finish on principle <laughs> no I'm how about you, you how about you watch that three. he-man that you said you're i have two watch. episodes left i'm not gonna do it i'm, I'm just telling you right now it's not gonna happen I, i'm watching Ar- coming you know what i'm watching what arcade me? is that you're like doesn't sound that bad i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it. like you, you're basically just daring. i'm telling you no like i'm telling list. you no i'm not gonna do oh, it that's the list 
I'm not going to do it. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to watch not it. It's not adding it to the list. So adding it to the list is different. Adding it to the list is like, I tell you about a thing. You're like, okay, I'm going to add it to the list. And maybe you just forget about it. This was like, I, I hate this. This is terrible. You're like, you know what? I'm going to watch it anyway. <laughs> no, if I say I'm adding it to the list, it's, I probably will but forget. It's, <laughs> it's easy to verbally it's flip you watched off. by top men. Yes. And I say that it's to easy. people who I don't give a shit. Like, I'm like, I'm never going to watch that, but I'll add to the list. Top <laughs> men. It's easy to say something because I know it'll bother you. It's it's much more work to actually follow through with it because that's hours of my that's time. That's true. He was just fucking with you. Man, I feel like you owe it to the bear. Smith. Not a bear. <laughs> that hurts. I did put on a little weight. Well, I don't mean it like that. Oh, I put on the so much weight. Expression poking the bear. Get fat. Anyway. Yeah. Get, you guys ready I, to I need on? to work on that. Yeah. Oh, wait. What are we talking about? Oh, the what Halo? No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was yeah. a Halo story. I thought we were still on turning red somehow. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. we have and we were talking marvel i was like oh, where the why the fuck are we talking oh yeah spider-man <laughs> we just got so far into it anyway <laughs> any other thoughts on halo before we move on i mean i i wish the best I and mean, hopefully it's good does it need to be done no but i just hope it's really good because it has the potential to like look really beautiful right. i would have loved to see james cameron freaking do a, a movie of halo that would have been awesome but he's too busy doing his avatar series that's never going to hit so it'll hit it'll hit you know what's not going to hit another t'challa says <laughs> sorry that's a weird way to say it. It. <laughs> mcu vp of development nate moore put to rest any discussion about recasting the character of t'challa as black panther says he talked with ryan coogler about it and we just couldn't do it um, so this was a conversation that Nate Moore was having with Van Lathan on the Ringerverse. Some other nuggets from that conversation. He said that they talked about it and the conversation was like seconds long, um, it, which I, I don't know. I feel like a decision that you make that fast is an not necessarily considered the right decision. One. Yeah, it's not the right one, but I think it's horseshit. I've talked about it online. I think it's kind of dumb. I, we had a really fun conversation with um eman from eman's movie reviews and so he's the proponent of the recast of child movement I, he got me on board i was like yeah i, I agree with you I, i'm curious how you all feel about this at all i just i think it's i'm terrible. with you 100 percent. it's a terrible idea I, I think i've said this several times like t'challa is a bigger character than one actor i don't like that they box themselves into this i get why they did it they want to be respectful of you know by all, someone who by all accounts is like was really amazing and awesome and everyone loved him and was highly respected and loved as the character but at the end of the day he, it's a character he had many other roles like it was one of many characters that he did and it's just it's not fair to the legacy of the character especially given what the character went through in that movie and now we're just not going to see anything from him ever again or he's going to be and, killed off screen or and who that, knows what. I was going to say the idea that you would kill him again, right? Yeah. So just died in his own movie, died in um, Avengers, quote unquote, died, snapped away, died in what if, going to fucking make me watch it again? Fuck. I, I don't understand how you think that that equates to respectfulness, given the fact that you've made me watch him die at least three times. And also my mind always goes to Alien 3 or after Aliens, they spent mm -hmm. all that time trying to save the girl. And then at the beginning of the third one, it's like, oh, she died in Bye. hypersleep yep. in between movies. This is like, well, that was pointless, wasn't it? She didn't really mean anything after all. It was not important. Yeah. So yeah, Nick, Danny, anything? No, I mean... I'm I'm conflicted about it. You guys make really really good points. Well, tell me why you're conflicted. Why are you conflicted? At first, I thought it was the right move because of honoring Chadwick, but you guys make good points about like it's also important to honor the legacy of such an important, like socially important Marvel character that made such a big impact. You know, when the movie came out, which I mean, I it would continue to make a big impact even if they were to switch out the actor. So I'm kind of still flippy floppy. I. So <laughs> what, what's frustrating about that is, so like Jammer, if Jammer is correct, that the thesis of this phase is the multiverse, and now we're just like, fuck you, 
you'll never get another one. It's like, how many Loki variants did we have to watch? How many Kang variants are we going to get? And now for whatever. No, because anger froze his internet. <laughs> oh no. He probably sees us and we're like really stupid looking because we're all frozen to him. <laughs> he looks really stupid looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay so, dear um, listener, right now all four of us look really stupid looking apparently that's not me uh, <laughs> that's why we don't release video of the podcast you know, can we I, not I give would us be, a picture for our local <laughs> i would be open for video podcasts let us do a video podcast fuck it well while we wait for uh jonesy what's the next story on our list everybody or Danny, what it. do you think about the child? I don't think you said. Yeah, let's, let's go to Danny first. I um I am definitely siding with with uh, Jonesy and Jammer on this. I do feel that when uh the, um, when this all started with the sad the sad passing of Chadwick Boseman, I do think that there was possibly a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation mm-hmm. that Marvel put were in, not put themselves in, obviously. Where if they said they would recast, they would have been one. Uh, people pissed off of them and if they said they would never do it there would have been people pissed off i think probably in hindsight the better question the better answer would have been something more on the fence of let's wait and see not quite like that obviously that would have been a bit too heartless but let's wait and see let's um find some way to further down the line make a decision that's best for everybody because now i think it's a bit knee-jerk to say never recast him because i yeah i think it's and character maybe- that he deserves better and uh and it was another character that Chadwick Boseman played. And none of those other characters are necessarily ever going to be, uh, never going to be used again. So, yeah, I think it's a tough one back when it first happened. And they painted themselves into a bit of a corner to avoid upsetting anybody. And now it's kind of a bit difficult to change, change, their, change their mind. And well, now he's upset everybody. <laughs> let's say he, they don't <laughs> kill him off and he's like off doing something. And then they get enough backlash that they're like, let's recast them. I would, yeah. I would like the idea if they just didn't paint themselves into a corner, like Danny yeah. said, like just leave it open ended. Like yeah. something yeah. happens, he's got to go off world or whatever. And then when the heat dies down, when there are people that could accept a new actor playing that character, mm-hmm. bring him on back. Yeah, rather than being like, not even in the next five years, like whatever they. And do th- you think this applies to the animation? I assume so, but Jammer wasn't so. so sure. No, I'm pretty sure it doesn't apply to animation. Like I think they could he just easily to, write him out of Guardians of the, the Multiverse, but but I just think it's MCU, like MCU live action. And he Absolutely. was specific. He did say MCU, but not live. But the thing is, no. what if is also MCU? And I could see them mm. utilizing him in other animation things in the future. So I could see MCU live action. What if they did that? Ooh, what if they just did an animated? Black Panther spinoff starring T'Challa. Counts as, so I get that it's canon. So you know, it's not, it's not cinematic. So you yeah. kind of cut out. Can you, can you repeat your things again? Because I was just saying that it's weird. They need a new name. It's not cinematic. Anymore. Oh, MCU. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you, some, some might call television oh, wait, cinematic, cinematic these days, even if it's yeah. not cinema. Cinematic in, the, in its stylings. And Martin its Scorsese wouldn't. Martin Scorsese. <laughs> well, you say the movies aren't cinematic either. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So there's no way that television could be cinematic. I really uh-huh. like the uh, Alfred Hitchcock thing you retweeted, Jonesy. I think it was you. Where it was? Can you explain? Uh, uh, it was like a, a fake variety article where it's like Alfred Hitchcock won't direct a <laughs> Marvel oh, movie yeah. because he's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. I don't think so. He died a million years ago. 11 He's like billion a, years ago. 11 billion years ago. You guys ready to move on? Yeah. Before <gasps> my internet on. crashes, fucking Comcast. Anyway. Comcast. I don't so think, I have tell- you met anyone who's just like, you know what? My internet provider is fucking great. I would never move, I would never move on to somebody else. I've never met anyone who said that. My Comcast is pretty good, but I also would never say that. But <laughs> I was thinking about getting a new internet provider. We'll see what happens, but. This is just ridiculous because there's no reason for this to happen. But anyway, moving on, moving on. Uh, two stories I'm going to tie together. It's the fact that, so last week we talked about, hmm, what? What? Go ahead. Good. Uh, so last week we talked about the fact that Rogue Squadron was delayed. Um, 
Jammer in the chat talked about the fact that he had a source that said, no, this is delayed indefinitely. Uh, and so now we're getting news that that seems to be the case. Uh, we've got another- To be clear, here. my source says f- they, they think it's indefinite. He didn't say, oh, it's definitely indefinite. He said, that's what, that's what cooler talk is saying. That's, that's right. water cooler talk is that it's you know indefinite. So another source online, um, Pucks Matthew Baloney, is saying that it is being delayed <laughs> indefinitely. You're saying Sorry. that because he's because his last name is Baloney. Yeah. yeah, no, no, just uh, as a funny last name, it's nothing to do with his credibility. Yeah, I think it has everything to do with his credibility. Okay. Um, the fact that this is also going to be delayed indefinitely, and not just delayed indefinitely, it's because of creative differences. So this was set to be released in 2023, and they're saying that due to these creative differences and their inability to settle on a script, uh, Kathleen Kennedy has moved on to other films, which include Wonder Woman 3. So we might not get this at all. And the other story that I was going to tie this to was the idea that, you know, some fans or not fans some star wars let's say some star wars fans have been chomping at the bit for kathleen kennedy to vacate the head honcho seat at lucasfilm and cede her control of star wars but that doesn't seem like it's going to be the case right so three more years for kathleen kennedy in the head honcho seat uh, sitting on top of Star Wars. And I was curious how you guys felt about any of this. I'll say for me, Rogue Squadron was the film that I was the most excited about. Uh, It's the project that I was the most excited about, especially coming from Patty Jenkins, whose father was a pilot, a fighter pilot. So I feel like if there was anybody that was going to do it justice or like have at least a decent perspective, uh, she would have brought something really special to it. And that probably just based on not just professionalism, but also pride for who her father was and what he did. So I agree on that count. Um, And also I wanted to add about Kathleen Kennedy is that, you know, the, you know, she's obviously responsible for the good stuff too. Like the TV, like, you know, and a lot of people pointed to Mandalorian and they're like, oh no, that's Dave Filoni and John Favreau. It doesn't matter that she greenlit it. But it's like Star Wars visions also exist because of her. Like she greenlit yeah. that. People like it's that just, also. It's knee-jerk fanboy, stupid ass reaction where there's like the things I like, I will I will pick and choose what she's responsible for to fit my I narrative. Honestly, believe it's partially because she's a woman. Absolutely. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. I, I would argue I think some of it stems from that. And I also think that some of it stems from general dissatisfaction with the sequel series. So people are extrapolating from that. And their own sexism slash misogyny, and just a lot of people also love Rogue One together, and they wouldn't give her credit yeah. for that. <laughs> yep, yeah, they don't. They literally don't. They're like, oh, I heard she fought fought that movie, or oh, well, that was just an easy one to green light, or oh, blah 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 blah. Well, what they say about Rogue One is so the management issues that happened behind the scenes, and the fact that I think it was um, Gilroy who had to come in and quote unquote yep. fix it at the end yep. and so even if you give her credit for it being a good movie you still have to look at what happened behind the scenes mm-hmm. to even get there and i feel like that is her not, that is her biggest her, like, flaw her for fault, me but yeah that is the biggest problem that i've seen is that at least initially for the first set of while that, that this inability to get the right person for the right project to follow through because we had that version yeah, the Gareth so Roberts or Gareth Roberts Gareth Edwards yeah, Gareth Edwards yeah who's Edwards. Gareth Roberts I don't know okay. your neighbor Gareth... some random guy who's listening to this Gareth... he's like what the fuck Gareth Edwards <laughs> um, uh, Lord Miller mm-hmm. yep um and then Colin Trevorrow Colin Trevorrow, Colin Trevorrow. Yeah. yeah who wasn't was on, um who's Trank who's supposed episode. to do one as well oh Josh Trank was going to do a Boba Fett movie yeah but then you know he tranked which is basically punching upward at the establishment, yeah. yelling at them and shit talking. Interesting. So that but anyways, did you just the, make that up? Danny's I wearing mean, a Star Wars shirt. So I, I want no his idea. opinion too. Yeah, Danny, with no, your Star I, Wars. Yeah. 
I am a I am a Star Wars fan. I do feel that, that like Jones said, I think that the, the sequel trilogy has kind of tarnished Kathleen Kennedy. Anything good that she's done, I think that's going to be the uh, the the weight around her neck that she's got to tolerate for a while because she's done everything that's been greenlit by her at some point and made decisions by her at some point. So like like you say, Gemma, fanboys are getting a little bit pissed off and forgetting about the good stuff she's done, cherry picking what they want to complain about and stuff. Um, I've been hit and miss with the Star Wars stuff, but I still get super excited about any new Star Wars stuff that's coming. So I was a bit disappointed that Rogue Squadron's been delayed. I'm hoping it's just been yeah. delayed, not not like never maybe they can find another filmmaker. Um, yeah, because I mean, here's my problem with Patty Jenkins is that she she requires a lot of power. It sounds like based on Ultimate what she power. said ultimate power <laughs> um but yeah she seems like she wants like a lot of power and very much is like kind of an auteur type person which can be great but as we saw with like wonder woman 1984 can also be detrimental um and from what she said she had basically complete creative control over that movie um which is you know a counterpoint to the first wonder woman where she didn't have complete creative power and that movie turned out a lot better than the second one so i mean it's not Yes, auteurs are great, but also sometimes it could be great to have somebody who's willing to push back a little, as once again, evidenced by the Star Wars prequel trilogy, which was terrible because yeah. no one was pushing back against George Lucas. Yes, yeah. man. Yeah. But she could, it yeah. could also be great. It could also be great. So who? I don't think I've seen enough of Patty Jenkins' work to say definitively if, if her having ultimate power predisposes her products to being something that I like to see more or less, but time will tell. Well, maybe um, that's the quote. Maybe that's the key. She hasn't made enough uh, or as many movies yet to kind of earn that earn that right to have complete carte blanche to do whatever she likes. Let's say like someone like Christopher Nolan or someone mm. similar to that, where they've kind of okay, yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you like. It's going to be okay. Maybe she hasn't quite earned that yet. And uh, the, I felt that the new Wonder Woman film eighty four, I really didn't enjoy that, and I think that may have kind of uh derailed her 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 journey a little bit unfortunately so yeah maybe rogue squadron shouldn't have been the next film that she does maybe she needs another film to steady the ship to remind everybody that she is good at what she does and can make a great movie and then come back to it How about another um, wonder woman movie <laughs> it was bad <laughs> but it could have been worse um <laughs> and the last thing, the last thing i'll say about um it, about <laughs> kathleen kennedy is this and it kind of relates to what danny said the way that I think of the Star Wars trilogies, like those mainline movies, like those are the championship. And so it almost doesn't matter. Like you, you, so Rogue One, that's your conference championship. Nobody gives a fuck, right? Did you win it all? Winning it all means getting those mainline stories uh, done well. And I, I, right or wrong, right? I think that they probably need to change the narrative about how they do business as related to those movies. Um, but, but she did me, she did green light the best star wars movie to date which is the last jedi which is awesome so there's that mm-hmm. go ahead jonesy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no one's listening anymore to jam yeah. though. disney <laughs> plus day happened that was a thing and <laughs> so there was so much stuff that came out of disney plus day that we're not going to go through it line by line item by item i am going to ask you all to pick one project and i think at least for Jammer and Nick, I know what your one projects are, but tell me Shit, what is the one thing that you, I don't even know if I know my one thing. Hold really, on, I have to look at the. Yeah, I have to look at the list and see. Do you want me to tell you? I can tell you. Hold on, don't, don't tell me. Don't, no, 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 don't, 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 don't tell me. I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna yeah, write, write it down. Write, oh, write it down and then hold it up when I say it. I like this. I don't think I have a pen. Um, but Danny, while while I'm looking for a pen and while they're doing that, you tell me what if anything is your favorite project. Uh. Uh, i don't know i am only right now excited about obi-wan and more excited than i thought i was going to be about um boba fett that's it i'm more excited about that than i thought i was going to be in honest but obi-wan that's the thing it's like yep ewan mcgregor back as obi-wan kenobi Go for it. I'm a little bit nervous about how they're bringing Darth Vader back uh, um, 
in that sense because you know they've only met once before so how are they going to fight again i'm a bit confused about how they're going to play that out but hey i don't think we know so, right i don't think that there is any well, in Star evidence Wars, to he, say well he said the last time we met yeah so true. i think that there is yeah. a lot of Cam interpretation in there <laughs> from a certain he, point of view what did he yeah, say? It could it been from a certain point of view yeah, that, that's a, it's not what Cam said. He's like, but he he's like, look at the line closer. He doesn't say like last time we like. Yeah, there's room to that last time on ram stuff in there. <laughs> when I chopped your arms and legs off, <laughs> left you to burn to death. <laughs> yeah, I just left you there. Didn't even put you out of your misery. <laughs> Which is I rough, split right? up like your this- twins. <laughs> That's terrible. To a point where they before, kissed each other before I they kidnap didn't know. your children. <laughs> Obi Wan is a dick. God, I know, I've, I've got a bit of a thing for your wife. <laughs> yeah, that's it's the Star Wars stuff, Jonesy, for me, buddy. The Star Wars okay. stuff, right? Yeah. Nick Doll, you ready? You ready with yours? Yeah. All right, hold on. I don't know if you're gonna oh. be right or not. The only hold reason. On. I don't- because I don't know what I'm excited for. There's so many little okay. things. There's so Go many Nick. good ones. Yeah. I'm gonna there say just because no... it's close, close because it's close enough. And we, I don't know. I, I'm gonna say Hawkeye at the moment. Really? Whoa! Was that yeah. something from Disney Plus? The Disney Plus Day, you mean? Yeah. Well, you know, they showed the reels from what from footage they did have, um, <laughs> and. Uh, and they, feel like they showed a, more specific. there's a literal clip. Yeah, oh, what, what an announcement. Yeah, what announcement? Agatha, probably. Okay. Okay. I was wrong. Oh, there's, there's a lot so of many other things. ones too, but Here's so the thing. I had oh. I had zombies for Nick. That's what I had. Okay. It is intriguing. Um, but I I, I even after what if I, I definitely prefer the live action stuff. Okay. Just I feel like we're doing the, uh, has more the Ghostbusters thing. Like, what kind of card? What's the card? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jammer. Let me let me see if I can go one for one for two. So I'm gonna. Here's the thing. I don't know what my favorite thing was there because I don't think there was a home run, but there was a lot of uh, singles. So like, gotta pick one. I'm gonna name. Oh, oh fuck you. Okay. Pick one, yo. Oh, That's one. Uh, my one. And I'm scrolling through them to see, to see here. My one. I rub my fingers Say together. It. Rub my coins together. Come on. Say come it. on, baby. What is it? What is it? Say it. Oh, yeah. You're not thinking you're not going to guess it. What is it? The Tiana series. Damn it. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, fuck. What's Tiana? That's, I had Zootopia Plus. No, oh. because it was shorts. I would have said yes if it was actually a series. But it's a bunch of shorts. Same. And I don't want a bunch of shorts. Well, Give of me a was, series. Of course, I was going with Marvel, but I agree with Jammer. I would want to follow the same characters, I, yeah. honestly. Or not even the same characters. I'll give me give me whole different stories within yeah. Zootopia in that yeah. ecosystem. That's what I'll I figured watch, you'd be. I'll into. watch a I would be, but the thing is it's shorts. I want longs, you know, I want full <laughs> series. Like a full, you know, said. 20 to 45 minute episode show for like show. eight episodes. I love you threw that in there at the last last minute yeah um but you would have been right you're you're right it would have been it would have been that had it been that but no seriously uh i was had it been longer okay i was actually surprised the tiana show i was just like oh i really like princess and the frog i'll watch more of that sure um and then there was uh moon knight i like i'm I'm pretty excited about moon knight i need more um I need more. I agree, but I'm still excited about it. Um, and then let's see. The other one is uh, Proud Family. I'm pretty I excited that you, for like, that. The, the rule was one. Yeah, was, I, I know. I, I gave you my one. I okay, gave you my well, one. Well, then we're done. Then, then we're all done. Too. That's it. You give one. Also, the Willow every, video was so funny. Listen, dude. I mean, everybody could have given like there. five, six. That wasn't the rule. See, Danny did it. Nick did it. Did you do it yet? No. That's the other reason I'm upset. You just take it up time. Oh, what did you, what did you do? What's your favorite? X-Men 97? Oh yeah, That's I fair. forgot about that one, but that one is pretty exciting. That's like that was eh. out of like left field completely. I feel like if they go the new Batman the animated series route that they're taking where they're like we're going to we're going to cater it to the people who watched this back then and it's going to be PG-13. slightly more adult. Yeah, as adult as they can get it on Disney Plus, then I'll be into it. 
I'm afraid they might not do that because it's animated. Otherwise, I mean, we've seen Disney Plus go pretty dark. Wow. Yeah. What if has been, you know, decently pretty good. Yeah. So I'm hoping I will it's say, in like, vein in terms of I did trade. revisit the X Men series when the, when Disney Plus came out, and it doesn't hold up for me. I liked no, it I when I was so. younger. It doesn't hold up. It's like really cheesy and just not very good. Yep. So I hope morph. it's better than that. Morph. <laughs> Yeah. Ice cream morph. It's it's, it's, it's not, no. No. Okay. You guys, you guys done? You guys ready to move on? You guys ready watch, to watch uh, watch that Willow video if you haven't watched I didn't it. Know there was it's a video of that. I don't That's want great. to. I don't watch it. People got okay. people got to say Warwick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was really funny. You're not laughing, Jones, because you don't know what he said. I didn't know you pronounced it Warwick. I thought it was Warwick. I knew it was Warwick. I didn't. And you you could have corrected Warwick. Me. Now you'll never get that chance, Nick. You've never said it before. That's all right. We'll always have Goosebusters. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, it was Gus Busters. Gus, I'm sorry, Gus Busters. I love how you're correcting me on your incorrect pronunciation. (laughs) (laughs) No, but but Nick, uh, Warwick Davis was telling how to pronounce. He's like, it's Warwick, or it's Warwick, and they're like Warwick. He's like, no, no, drop the W. They're like Orwick. He's like, no, not the first W. I actually, that's maybe my problem. I didn't know there was no Warwick. Wait, now I don't know how to say it anymore. <laughs> I've been saying it properly right. my entire life. <laughs> Since I knew we played an Ewok. <laughs> Warwick. Yeah. Yeah, you said oh, it. I got it. Yeah, like I guess I didn't know there was a like second the W in there, which is why I've been pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it, apparently. Classic Nick doll. <laughs> no, this it's is like you're the, I know how to say it. <laughs> you're like those people who spell Kit Harrington's name wrong. It's one R, folks. Is it two T's one though, R. Right? Kit? No, it's one okay. T. No, I guess that was my cat's right. name. <laughs> it was not that's even the, the T I was thinking of. Up. <laughs> like Harrington. Harrington. <laughs> Harrington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys ready to review a movie? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, can, can I it? What's your thing? What? I watched the first episode of Cowboy Bebop and I really like it. This is totally it. who watches. You want to do who watches now? Yeah, let's do who watches right now. I feel like we oh, should do who we, watches. No one, Jonesy, I can say. Well, because because Danny, Danny and Nick didn't were didn't watch didn't get to okay, watch fine. Ghostbusters, all so right, they had a chance right. to participate. Also, I get to talk about Cowboy Bebop, but they didn't watch it's Cowboy good, Bebop guys. either. No, he's saying it's who watches, so he's just talking about. His ah, I see. He's just gonna sell it. Okay, go. Whereas you and I can talk a little trick. No, I just think it's uh it's really fun. Like I know a lot of people are shitting on it, but I impressed. I think it's just it has a fun spirit to it. I still don't think it's like the original show, but I think it it more encapsulates sort of it does encapsulate sort of an anime feel brought to live action more accurately than I think think I've seen a lot of them, but not Cowboy Bebop, ironically enough. Um, but yeah, I think I like the characters so far. I think the dynamic is fun. If the, any if the first episode is representative of the rest of this show, I'm I think I'm on board for it. It's just a yeah. lot of fun. It's like it's like almost something that Robert Rodriguez did. It feels like a Robert mm. Rodriguez show. Oh, I'm, I'm excited about that. What I find funny about that is, is like, yeah, it captures the spirit of an anime. Not the one it was intending to. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> accurate. That is accurate. That's, that's how I feel about it. Anyway, um, does, does that convince either of you, Danny or Nick, to want to see this? I was already planning I'm on gonna it. Watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I was waiting last night. I thought it would drop at midnight. Mm. And like at 12.02, I'm like, damn, I guess I'll go back to Tiger King for now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was having... It wasn't there. Yeah. And I, I totally Trek, forgot. Of course. Yeah, I was going to say, I totally forgot that it was coming out. And last night, the thing that I was waiting for, like, I was like, I need therapy. I need I need something to make me feel better. So I started watching Discovery. So we got the first episode of that. Season four. Uh, Thursday, season four. And... Um, I feel like generally season four of Star Trek shows are like, they go hard, right? You get the best of both worlds with uh, Star Trek, the next generation. People talk about the last season of Enterprise being the best season of that show. And I think in Deep Space Nine, I think that's the season where they added Worf. So generally speaking, season four of Star Trek shows are pretty damn good. So I'm, I'm curious how this is going to go. We got an episode called Kobayashi Maru, which... Um, did you explain it, Nick? I heard you. T- did you? I know you said the name. Did you explain it? I didn't explain um, right. Kobayashi Maru. If you haven't mm-hmm. seen even the Abrams movie, um, but if I think don't the first time they mention it is a uh, Star Trek the Motion Picture. I, picture, I think it's a uh, test. No, it's two. 
the Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan. Oh, that's right, Wrath of Khan when he's talking because that's how it kind of opens. Look at the non Star Trek or Star Wars fan, yeah, non Star Trek fan coming in here like, yeah, it's two. It's Wrath of Khan. Love Wrath it. of Khan, obviously. But uh, <laughs> Shaka Khan, that's Shaka Khan. Obviously. But uh, I feel no, the Kobayashi <laughs> Maru is a, a a simulation that you can't win no matter what scenario you try you you lose because it's supposed to teach you about well, no the scenario is the same we all watched the abrams movie nick we know I'm explain it we to the know. audience i know i'm, I'm kidding that's, why I that's the only reason that. i know it that's the only reason i know is because of the abrams movie it's a no win really? scenario interesting program yep. and of course most captains don't believe in no no win scenarios and they take extra risk when it could kill all their crew which is yeah something that happens in the episode and happens all the time. Yeah, I feel like that movies. test has the opposite result, right? Like, I love the way that she explains it in this episode because she, they talked about the fact that people go back to the rooms and they start trying to think about how they can fix it and how they can solve it. And I feel like the damage done by that test creates a pathology where it's like, I need to go try and save everyone and everything. Mm-hmm. So... And I liked how it opened a lot. It was a strong opening to like a series. It felt very uh, into darkness. Like the opening into darkness with running and yeah. jumping off cliffs. And I think it was. I, I think that it was an homage to a movie that I don't like. But it's a good part of the movie, though. Yes, that's like, like that it's opening like a cold scene open. Is really yeah. good. Literally a cold open because they make yeah. the volcano inert. <laughs> I think that would have been a good movie, but for the plot twist, as we've said multiple times on the show. Or if it was uh, Gary Mitchell, or at least I've said multiple times. My name is Khan. Khan. JJ Abrams. He's not Khan. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> Ghostbusters <laughs> Afterlife. Oh, one more yes. thing before we get to Ghostbusters. God damn it! Don't you want Danny's opinion? <laughs> hey, don't on, you want uh, Danny's the heart thing? Of they fall? On the heart? Of- no. <laughs> what did they talk about? Week. That was that was weeks ago. It was weeks ago. Well, he wasn't here to like talk about it last week. It was last week. That's all right. Anyway. I feel like you want like, it more. Don't yeah. Like fight about that offline. Okay, there you go. On the line. <laughs> and we got Eon. Uh, are you are you going to talk Ghostbusters? Because I'm going to tap out if you're going to talk Ghostbusters. Well, let's we are gonna, spoiler free. And then yeah, we're going to we'll do a spoiler free out. Ghostbusters, and then we will uh, then we'll move on. Uh, so Ghostbusters currently has a 62 percent on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and a 96. From the audience, it's got a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb and a 47% on Metacritic. Those are some interesting numbers. Um, Jammer, would you like to give your non-spoiler impressions so that these two can tap out? I'm, I'm actually going to give start continue the trend of bad opinions. Uh, I've always thought that the original Ghostbusters was okay. It wasn't great. It was fine. Um, I enjoyed the, the Paul Feig one because... It doesn't at all represent what the original Ghostbusters was, but I thought it was enjoyable to watch. Yeah, it's funny. Um, but this funny one, I think, it. is easily the best Ghostbusters movie to date, in my mind. Uh, I think it has the strongest emotional through line, um, the highest quality of filmmaking, and just it, the, the third act is a little floppy. It's not the best, but it's a... Uh, I think the first the first two thirds of it were strong enough. And like the very, very end of it, I think was, was OK to the point where I was just like, you know what? I'll give it a pass because I enjoyed myself so much for like the first two thirds to three quarters of the movie. So Shang-Chi. Yeah. Sticking the landing is hard, man. I, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, so my Danny has already seen my spoiler free impressions. I think that it's a retread of the first film in a lot of ways. Um, Interesting. Just, just bringing in the same villain. Because it right? doesn't it's, feel at all like the original Ghostbusters to me. At all. Like, it feels I, like a, an Amblin movie. So, I, it's hard to say well, without that. spoiling it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Because you get a lot of that um, childhood wonder. And kind of spielberg E.T. feeling. and Which yep. is, the, like, the strongest part of this film. Yep. So, I think that aside from being a retread like you get the heart you get the laughs you get the great characters um and i think the people who been. are f- yes yes that is exactly yes. right yes i was so well, thousand percent if, if um, you were if you what you wanted from super eight is what you'll get from this movie most cool. of it on board with stranger that. things but less less horror 
Oh, okay. I was just going to say, like, they capture the Amblin feel very well at Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah. It's Super not as dark. It's just weird. Yeah. Where are you going with this? Anyway. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think, Nick, that's that's dead on for me. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I... I don't know if Jammer and I have the same feelings, like the reason why we think the end is wonky, but there is something in there. I'm like, why'd you do that? Um, yeah. Something is cool though. They uh, the visual effects. They, they leaned into practical effects for this one. Oh, so you'll notice that it's not just that, like, it's like, Oh, it looks more real. No, it looks, it looks, it has that cheesiness that the original had that flatness yeah. to it, you know, like where, you know, certain like zappy things are like, look like they're more like they're composited or superimposed onto like a, a shot. It kind of has that feel. Interesting. A lot of them. Well, I definitely yeah. want to see it. So I'm gonna, probably yeah. going to go Thanksgiving week. Yeah. Next if you go in not week. expecting like, oh, I want that. I, I want that high, th- that highbrow blue collar comedy dry stylings of the original. You're not gonna like this movie. Yeah, don't know what the original is. That how people say the original is. That's how. That's how people. That's how like fucking Ghostbusters neckbeards like to talk. That they talk about. That's what's what made it so great. Um, it's not. It's but it's yeah okay. Yeah. All right. I, I think care. I really liked it because I was a kid. I feel like my. <laughs> I feel like my nostalgia for that film and like my enjoyment of the film is firmly rooted in the fact that when I was a kid, just like X-Men. How we about dare X-Men. you imply the nostalgia has anything to do with the quality of Ghostbusters? The fucking fans would, would eat you alive. <laughs> no, sorry. I really hate Ghostbusters fans. I just hate fans. I realized. Really? I'm a, yeah. I didn't know there were that many to hate. Like that's the thing. Oh, well, I remember, try writing about Ghostbusters when the 2016 Ghostbusters came out. Yeah. They were fucking villainous well the problem they is were you awful. like it that the problem no no even like even before that no before the movie came out mm-hmm. the years leading up to it they were terrible because like the they were toxic <laughs> like they were they were toxic before you know before star wars fans got even more toxic like they were more toxic than star wars fans at the time actually i think they might still be to be perfectly honest ghostbusters fans yeah that's fascinating interesting interesting take um, I mean, maybe that's just my limited perspective because I was writing about it at the time. So I got to see the seedy underbelly of, of Slimer. But, um, <laughs> but you know. Um, I'm is curious, is. is this too spoilery? Because it's, no, this isn't a spoiler because it was in a trailer, but, you know, take this for what it's worth. How do you, Jammer, feel about the fact that they erased 2016? Oh, I don't I care. know that. I don't care. That was obviously its own universe anyway. Yeah, it was because it utilized the, the Ghostbusters as like cameos that of random non, uh, non-connected yeah. cameos. And they so, discovered yeah. ghosts, you know, just like in the first movie. Like, you know, yeah. there's no mention of previous ghosts. They discovered ghosts. They have the same like mayor scene as the first. It was truly like a reboot as if yeah, like the other one didn't exist. Whereas this one okay. is a continuation of the mythology. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's why I figured. I mean, yeah. What else? Anything else before uh, you all leave? I think Nick in- I think it leaned a little bit too much into fan service. Um, I think most of the movie, I was just like, "Oh, this this could have been a movie that came out without the IP known as Ghostbusters, and it would have just been boom." But then, like stuff happened, I was like, "Oh, maybe not," and then it <laughs> leaned a little too hard into it. Yeah, I think um, I think it's a weakness. But if you're a huge fan of Ghostbusters, maybe you'll like it. I think you and I are talking about the same thing. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, I guess we're gonna take I, off. You guys out? You yeah. Guys yeah. Out? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I think you guys a, will enjoy it. Yeah. If you like what we said, I think you'll you'll enjoy it. If you like what we said, if you like what we said, I see what I meant to say. I can't talk today. Obviously, you can't make good opinions either. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man Two, yeah. and am I out? No. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Adios. Bye. Adios. So, so I don't I don't have a lot more to say about it. Usually, if I enjoy a film, I don't have a ton of things to say about it, which probably isn't a good thing. Um, <laughs> Learn to explain why you like something, Jonesy. I want to hear I, why. I mean, I what can easily. Enjoy? I think that Grace McKinnon was her. She was so good. She was the heart of this film, and I what I loved about it was that she was not. She was a, 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 oh, what am I going to say? She was a stereotypical character, but 
they layered on so much other stuff. So usually you will see this kind of character and they're just nerdy and withdrawn and can't really seem to move beyond that. And that was kind of who she was, but she also had these, these other layers to her where she was trying to tell jokes and like she, she leaned into it. And those were truly enjoyable moments. Like the, the scene where she's telling the joke to Paul Rudd in the beginning and she winks. And she at winks. Him. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, was, was that a joke? She's like, yeah, that's why I winked. And it's just like, I, I already liked her before that, but I feel like for me, that was the moment where I'm like, I'm really going to enjoy her take on this character. Um, I think what I really liked about her take was that it was, it had the capacity to be the way she was described as like really smart um, to the point where she had a hard time making friends. Like you kind of get those, it, I'm not sure if you had this impression, but like a lot of times when you have these smart characters, it's like, they don't like people. They don't want to be around people. Whereas this character wanted to, but just didn't know how. There was like an extra vulnerability to her and this sort of desire to be liked, even though she didn't know how to do it. Like right. when, and just sort of her her warmth and happiness when he that her friend asked to be her lab partner. And she was just like, oh, like she was super excited. And it was just adorable to watch. So there was like that extra one. And then when she leaned into the jokes, like even at the very end, when she was telling the jokes to that ghost, yeah, there was just, she was just like, went all in on the jokes. And I was like, she was able to balance between like, yes, I'm really smart, but also I'm still a little kid. Right. Um, but I think it also helps that you have her playing the role, the actress, because she, that's like her thing is playing smart characters. She played one. She was um, in that Chris Evans movie, Gifted, where she played the right. gifted child. And then she was also in Young Sheldon as the un other smart kid. Oh. And so like, this is like a third, at least a third. Maybe there's more. I don't know. Uh, another third smart kid that she's played. So it's like, she's had time to practice. To develop the smart kid character. To develop the smart kid character. She's cornered the market. Um, Pretty much. Did, did you think that, so I've got to ask you, the, we're talking about the end. We were talking mm. around it. What was the thing about the end that you didn't like? I knew exactly the moment where it kind of fell off. There were two, there's the moment where uh, the mom rips off her clothes and then there's a golden dress. And I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, this is weird. And then Paul Rudd and her kind of go up to each other and then like, they like fake make out. And I was like, oh, this is weird. What's happening? Like the rest of the movie to that up to that point, I felt very sort of heartwarming and emblem, amblin-ish. And sort of relatively grounded, but also has that fantastical feel to it. And then we just kind of went into the original Ghostbusters camp that I did not expect. And I could see people liking it, but considering the tone we had gone with, it it clashed with me. Yeah. And seeing those monsters and seeing the ghosts at the end. And there was also that moment where the main, the girl character said something like explained, oh, if these two guys come together, then they're going to make this other ghost. I'm like, when did we discover that? I don't know right. if I was slow, but I don't remember. I didn't follow it. I still don't understand how they came to that conclusion or even what the plot is at that whole point. So I also, so I'm surprised because the thing that I didn't like was when the original Ghostbusters showed up. I also don't um, like that. In full I also uniform. feel that. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was it. That is the part where it's like, okay, now we're into a territory that I do not enjoy. Um, was the guy that brought her, that built the, the place for Gozer, was that J.K. Simmons? Yes. Weird, what a right? Weird non part for, and Bokeem In the 2D on. rip, the way she ripped him in half. I thought yeah. I was like, whoa, whew, that came out of nowhere. It's one line. Is he just friends with Reitman? <laughs> like, I don't, I was very confused. So between yeah. him and Bokeem Woodbine, who was like, who are you going to call? Um, that's what I was talking about last night. So yeah, when, when he said that, I was just yeah. like, when that happened in the movie, I was like, oh, that's what he was talking about. <laughs> who are you going to call? So bad. Um, I didn't think that that came out. So it was weird that both of those characters and actors had no part. Also, there's an actress from a show called uh, Reservation Dogs who mm. was in the, have you seen the show? I saw the first episode and I was like, okay. this is too stressful for me. And I stopped. <laughs> so the, um, one of the characters, one of the girls is a background character when they go to the mountain the first time. And I was like, that's, 
so-and-so that's really weird so I, I thought it was interesting that at least three people that i know from other things just had very little to do with this movie but i also do wonder if maybe they cut a lot of stuff from it I buy to that. make you know to make it to slim it down more which could be why i'm confused about the plot and maybe why some subplots with those characters were just like nixed a little bit yeah um there was one other thing i was going to ask you about um i also liked mckenna grace's relationship with her brother um mm. i feel like they did a good job of creating characters that and relationships that you know but also not making them too stereotypical I would have expected them to not like each other or something like have some sort of stress, but they got along. They liked each other. They were brothers and sisters. They were fr- like, I, I get tired of seeing that same relationship dynamic played again and again and again. So it was nice seeing this where he had a sister that he obviously cared for. He was trying to help her integrate into larger society. Like, Hey, here are the jokes that you could tell. So you're not a complete fucking goober. Um, I mean, here's, I think, fun. uh, I think, I think that trope of, of siblings hating each other was especially prevalent when we were kids or around our age. I think it's less so now, um, but I agree. I like it when siblings get along. It's nice. Like um, another movie that I actually just rewatched recently, I appreciate the sibling relationship was Mitchell's versus the Machines, mm. where the sister was really supportive of the brother's dino- weird dinosaur <laughs> addiction yeah. stuff. And it was just like, they very clearly loved each other. And I just like it when they just get along. It's, it's a little more realistic. Yeah, they fight. Obviously that happens, but at the same time, there's, it's nice when like the, the love siblings have are like reflected on screen. I'm curious what that means. Like what was going on in the seventies and eighties that <laughs> the people writing this stuff was like a fucking, Hey, my brother or sister. And it's going to be reflected in the work that. I think it was low hanging fruit, <laughs> low hanging fruit jokes. Of being mm. like, oh, we obviously hate our sister. That's an easy way to get a laugh out of kids because we all hate our sister. Go with it. I guess. Like freaking Kevin McAllister hating all of his siblings, all of his cousins and siblings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But um, but um, yeah, like the fan service at the end was too much. I agree with them showing up. I think they could have handled it in a way that worked, that was less like reverent. Like yeah. if the shots didn't linger as long, if they if they if they did things that blocked it a specific way, I think it could have been effective as like a standalone story. Been like, yes, these are the guys that we saw in the video. Like, yes, these are the guys who did this. To like, it would have built up to, oh, these are the guys from that, as opposed to, oh, these are the guys from the last from the first Ghostbusters right. movie. Like, it could have been done in a way that I think would have satisfied me and you, but it it was very much like let's stop the whole movie right. and just keep the camera pointed on these guys because the fact that we got Bill Murray back is just still a godsend. And let's just make sure that we milk him for all it's worth. Use up that screen time. Don't know if you're going to see it again. Here it is, baby. Pretty much. Um, what I, the other thing that I liked about this movie, and this is probably the last thing that I think that I have to say about it. I watching the trailers, I was not sure how they would deal with Egon Spangler. And I mm. liked that just from the beginning, they were like, no, here he is. And then throughout the film, like he is also throughout the film as well. Um, I, for me, it played relatively well. And Mm -hmm. I'm curious how that played for you. Yeah. I was wondering if we're going to see him at all. I would have thought it was a little, it would be a little bit weird if we didn't actually see his face, but I'm happy they decided to go voiceless CG face. I think that was, and then, but mostly not show him until the very end. I think they handled that really well. The balance between, I guess the respect and, and making sure you get character mileage out of him. I think it was really, really good and effective. Yeah. And it made me, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to wait uh, 30 years to get CG T'Challa. But <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. CG ghost T'Challa. Yeah. CG ghost T'Challa voiceless. Um, really quick. I did not stay for the second post credit scene because I oh. thought there would be only the mid credit scene because I was like, ah, this isn't a Marvel movie. I can leave. Um, I've gotten to the point where I started Googling. Okay. So what happens at the second, in the second post credits? What was the, remind me, the first one was the one with Bill the Murray. The first one was and, the cards. It was okay. Bill Murray and the cards and, and Sigourney Weaver. Okay. I really like that post credit scene because I liked, I, I know you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I enjoyed the fact that it kind of, 
you get to see how his life turned out. And it's nice that that relationship worked out. Um, so that was fun. Uh, and I'll, even I though, even like, though it's one of the reasons I didn't like it, I didn't like it because I'm like a kid who had just come into this movie or a person who had not seen the original nothing. had no connection. Fuck them. And I, for me, I'm just like, just make it stand alone. Like it, it, I almost wish I could erase the original Ghostbusters and then have this movie stand alone. I feel like it's more powerful that way. Yeah. They tried that in 2016. Didn't work. No, they didn't. They didn't try to connect it though. I'm saying they erased the original Ghostbusters and didn't play well. No, that's not what I meant. I don't mean erasing oh, okay. from existence the canon. I'm talking about pretend that movie didn't happen and imagine this movie came out with a property Ghostbusters not having existed. Yeah. Keep pretty much most of the elements. I think it's almost a more powerful story about like being able to kind of look into like what happened 40 years ago and this mystery yeah. and stuff. Like I think it almost plays more effectively if you're discovering it with the characters and uh, like sort of peeling back the layers of this world. And it's kind of that, that illusion of a standalone story is sort of ripped out of my beautiful hands when we have that scene at the end with Bill Murray. Okay. I I can see what you're saying. Um, I just, I, my perspective was that it was just a moment for those people, right. For people. Uh, it is, it is. Yeah. It. And just whatever. Don't care about you kids it's totally an anakin skywalker fuck these kids type moment <laughs> um so the second scene is winston having a conversation with janine and i'm not entirely sure what it means given something else that i'm going to say so he who's, is talking who's to janine janine melnitz she is the person she was the secretary the oh wait, 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 wait. really um, really quick also hmm. fun story she's also hmm. in young sheldon really she plays sheldon's grandma oh that's cute yeah. Anyways, apparently I watch a lot of Young Sheldon. I'm realizing now. I don't think I revealed I, that. I, think I actually enjoy the show. It's actually pretty warm. Okay. Anyway, continue talking to Janine um, or Janine. 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 Get it right. So they're having a conversation, and um, she she's talking about him and this business that he's built, and he's talking about yeah, you know, working with the ghost persons was the thing that told me that I had the tools and the talent to do whatever I want to do, and he built this business. We don't know what the business is, which I find interesting. Um, and you also get to see at the end of the movie, he talked about, you know, he's going to take Ecto one and, you know, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to fix you up, baby. And so you see him bring it back into the warehouse or not here, uh, the firehouse and you don't know what he's going to do with it. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not Raiders of the Lost Ark. He brings it into the, uh, to the firehouse and you get the impression he's going to do something to it, but you don't know what, um, one of the other things that you learn from that scene is the fact that he is paying the rent for Ray's business. So the occult store that Ray has, mm -hmm. um, he's not turning a profit and Winston is the one keeping it afloat. So I, I, the thing that I was, that I find interesting about that scene is it seems to set up a sequel, but it, as far as I know, there's not one in the works. Yeah. So who knows, right? We'll see. It was funny. I, I just imagine a really dark turn for this for that scene and that dark turn is like imagine he's like we're gonna fix you up ecto one and then we see some guy in Merchantburg. hey are you ready to get started elon musk comes out yeah let's get <laughs> to work a Tesla. yeah <laughs> and it's just like no. no 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 thankfully not no no edgelord billionaires here but no. what else anything else you have anything else to say about this uh this thing like i said i think it's my favorite ghostbusters to date Let's take from that what you will i have a skewed perspective on all the movies um but uh yeah i just think it's really it's just so much fun there's a lot of warmth yeah. there's great characters there's great filmmaking for the most part it doesn't completely stick the ending but hey i had a good time it was one of the better yeah. times i had in theaters this year yeah um the other thing i'll say i have a question for you did it seem like they were ignoring the events of two. Like they kept oh, referencing yeah. what happened yeah. in one, but it was really weird because I feel like the Empire State or not oh, the, the Statue of Liberty walking through the city is a bigger deal than what happened. I think they're trying to avoid any movie that nobody liked. And a lot of people didn't like the second one. And, but what I find interesting, I actually looked it up and they were like, no, no, it's a direct sequel to both movies. I'm sure. So, yeah. It, it, it's like, it didn't maybe reflect those events, but yeah. it like it, it, they still happened. Yeah. 
I love the little uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Men. They were cute. The ones that they were like horrifyingly like killing each other and themselves. <laughs> that was so good. When he bit Paul Rudd's, like, I think I laughed out loud very loudly when it bit his finger, when he reached for it. <laughs> it's like, it's Marshmallow. How could that possibly hurt? <laughs> It's shocking, probably. Just like, what the hell? But What's why happening? Did he say ow. He's like, ow. I mean, I would do ow if, if it did that. It's got no teeth. I mean, it's instinctively. <laughs> like, it's more of a surprise. Like, ah. Like, ow. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll take it. Anything else? No. Shut it no, down. No, I'm, I'm done. Let's shut it down. All right. Cut shut the it check. Down. Cut the check. So. Dear listener, if you like what you heard, do all the socials, like, rate, comment, subscribe, share. We would definitely appreciate it. Also, check out LRM Online. It's got other podcasts and great articles. Are you yawning? Are you yawning? Are you yawning while I'm trying to I am. God damn it. Damn it. I'm going to change it up. Uh, check out LRM Online. It's got uh, podcasts and articles for you to read that are really good. Other than that, though, Jammer, where can you be found? You can find me on Twitter at JamTheWriter and all of my books under the name AJ Cerna on Amazon and Audible. And you can find me at Sir Jonesius on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, right here on Breaking Geek for the podcast. Folks, as always, thanks for listening. And we will catch you on the next one. Hasta luego, Anya. Don't get any Anya. Mission accomplished. Boom. All right. Man. I got to go. My uncle just called. I think they're going to.